Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how I removed the background from my recent images and replaced it with these artworks, creating a very painterly old masters type of look to my images. Now before we start with the Photoshop tutorial, let's talk a little bit about where do you find these gorgeous backdrops for your images and most importantly, how do you make sure that they are free for you to use without infringing anyone's copyright? My absolutely favorite resource is actually the Met Museum's website. So go to metmuseum.org. I will leave the link in the description down below. Now we're going to click to art and art collections. Now in the search bar, you can go ahead and type whatever you're looking for. So for me, I'm looking for some flower backdrops. So I'm gonna type in flower. Now, once your search appeared here, make sure that you choose open access. Open access actually means that you can use these artworks in your own photography without worrying about infringing any copyright. So as long as you're looking through open access, you're good to go. Now, I also like to choose the artworks with the image and on the type of the image, I like to choose painting. But definitely feel free to look through all of different categories that they have on their websites. There are so many artworks to choose from. It's quite addicting just scrolling through the resources they have and trying to figure out what you can use in your own art. So the painting I decided to use for these particular images was Peacock and Hollyhogs by Bian Lu. I will leave the specific link uh, for this specific picture as well if you would like to use it. And as you can see here, it says public domain. So again, you know that you can use this image without any worries. So now to download it, you're just gonna click this button right here, which brings the image in its full quality. And then you can just right click, save image, as and then proceed to save the image whatever you would like. Now after downloading the image, I can import it into Photoshop and start working with it. I'm going to show you guys two different ways to remove the backdrop. The first one is my favorite one. It is extremely simple. It's perfect for beginners. And the second one is a little bit more complex, a little bit more professional. So let's start with the first one. Here's the backdrop that we're using. I'm going to click the selection tool and right click on the image, press duplicate the layer, and then choose the image that we're going to be duplicating it on. Now we can right click again and choose free transform this time to stretch it out and fit into our size. Okay, this looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and play around with blending modes. This will make the image fit into your original one a little bit nicer. So one of my favorite ones is soft light. Hard light looks good sometimes as well. Uh, multiply is not bad. Uh, screen works good. Uh, you can go ahead and play around with different blending modes and the ones that are going to work is going to depend on the lightness of the image that you are using or the darkness of the background that you originally have in the image. So you really have to kind of play around here to see what works. For this one, I think soft light works the best. So that's what I'm going to choose. Now I'm going to apply a layer mask to the background. And what this does is pretty much allows me to delete that top layer of certain spots and I'm going to delete it off of my model. Now to delete, you're going to choose this black color right here. Take your brush and you can just start brushing it on on places where you do not want that uh, new background to be. So I'm just taking it off of the model. Now, when you do this, always make sure that you're using a soft round brush to avoid any harsh edges. This one is my favorite soft round pressure brush because I'm actually using a tablet, which allows me to adjust the pressure. Uh, another thing that is so important when you're editing, uh, I 100% recommend getting a tablet if you do 
uh, edit professionally, if this is your job, get a tablet. It's going to make your work so much easier. So uh, anyways, I'm just deleting with the black color here uh, the background off of my model. Now, if you do not have the tablet, I would recommend doing this on a lower opacity or just kind of taking your time doing this accurately. So there we go. I'm just deleting it off until it looks good. Kind of going in on the hair. Now, if you feel like you messed up, like here, I went a little bit too far. You can switch back to uh, to white pick up your brush and then start painting it on. So the white will add that backdrop onto the image and the black will subtract it. I'm going to add it a little bit more in here in the little spaces between the hairs. A little bit over here as well. And then take it off a little bit as well. All right, so yeah, so this is before and after. As you can see, we replaced the backdrop. Pretty easy. So this is a super beginner kind of technique that's very easy to understand and for everyone to use. And let me show you a little bit more of a professional one. I'm going to hide this layer for right now. And on my original background layer, I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm just going to move it right here into that plus and it will duplicate my layer. So now we're going to go to Windows and open Properties. And this technique will only work on the newer versions of Photoshop. So Photoshop 2020 and 2021. If you have anything below that, you will not have this option. So right here on the quick actions, you're just going to press it open and you'll see remove background and select subject. And we're going to use remove background. All right, so as you can see, it created a layer mask with the removed background. And now if I make this layer visible and I move it in between, as you can see, it just replaced the background. So super easy, but there are some areas where it didn't do a very, very good job. I mean, the computer is doing the job for you. So of course it's not going to be super accurate. So we're going to go back into that selection and we're going to refine it just a little bit. So we're going to press select and mask. So it's going to take you to this window and uh, currently I have it selected to the color view, uh, but you might not have it like that. If this is the first time you've been using it, you might have it on the ants or the onion skin. So just press this little button right here. And I mean, you can play around with it. You can choose white, uh, but I personally like the color overlay so that I can see my selection really, really well. And now that we have it, we can see that there's some areas where it's not very nice, especially around her hair. So we will fix that very easily with this brush right here. So this is a refine edge brush right here. You can see refine edge brush tool. Uh, we're going to use it with the plus to make sure that we refine some of the edges of the hair. So all you have to do is just brush it on, just brush it on, on the hair. And whenever it's not looking the greatest. Okay. I'm going to brush it on just a little bit over here as well. A little bit over there. A little bit here. If you did a little bit too much, you can always go to the minus tool and kind of bring back some of the background. going to be very light handed here. Here I select a little bit too much of that hair with the shoulder. I'm going to go over it with a smaller brush again. Now there's few places where the refine edge brush didn't really work for me. Like right here, this rose randomly got selected. So we're just going to move on to the other brush tool. And with the plus, we're just going to brush it on 
onto the areas that are just kind of stubborn. So there's a little bit here. Oh, I missed this little spot right here with the refined brush. So I'm going to refine the edge here. Okay, that looks good. And I saw this little area that needs to be refined as well. All right, that looks that looks pretty good. So I'm going to zoom out now. And now the last thing we can do here is feather out and smooth our selection. So I'm going to feather out uh, about 3.6 pixels. You can really play around here and see what works for you. And I'm going to smooth out the selection as well quite a bit. And now make sure that your output is to a layer mask. Uh, I had it on new layer before for some reason. And it was creating a whole new layer uh, that's not needed. So make sure it's on layer mask and you can press OK. Now, finally, here's a few other things you can do to your background to make it fit with your image a little bit more. So I'm going to be using some adjustment layers on just the background itself. Uh, to do that, I'm going to press right here to create my uh, adjustment layer. I love using levels selective color, uh, color balance. I mean, you can experiment here, but these are some of my favorites. So let's start with levels. Okay, so make sure that this layer is directly above your background. Okay, don't put it all the way up here. It has to be above that new background that we've put in. Okay, so now you're going to right click on that new adjustment layer, the levels in our situation, and you're going to press create clipping mask. And as soon as you did that, you're going to see this little tiny arrow going down. The clipping mask means that you're going to be affecting only the layer below the levels. So we're going to be only affecting this new background layer right here. All right. So let's go back to our levels and what we can do here. Uh, we can make the highlights a little bit brighter. That looks pretty good. We can experiment with the brightness of the whole image itself. We can make the shadows not as dark or we can get those highlights darker. You can experiment here with different uh, colors like adding red. That actually looks pretty good. I like that. Uh, the red looks really nice. Um, so yeah, so that's levels. Let's add another one. Let's do a selective color. So same thing, create clipping mask. Uh, and you have that arrow that appeared. And just to let you guys know, it's not going to be affecting the levels because levels is an adjustment layer. It's empty as you can see there's white in here there's nothing there so it's only going to be affecting the background again so here on the selective layer what can we do we can go into neutrals and kind of play around with changing some colors maybe a little bit of a green yeah that looks pretty nice and as you can see it's only adjusting the background it's not adjusting the model herself Okay. Okay. Let's do it like that. Now, if you do want these to adjust the whole image itself, just make sure that your uh, layer is on top of everything. So here, let's do a color balance. And as you can see, it's on top of everything. There's no clipping masks. And then when I move it, it adjusts the whole image on its own. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do use any of my tips and tricks I mentioned in this video, don't forget to tag me on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to see what you guys create. Uh, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.